We are in a battle, spiritually, physically, mentally, biologically. Amen? And, and in this battle, the regimes that we're fighting against, they have a network of manipulation, of lying, because they are under the father of all lies called Satan, the devil, the serpent, the dragon, so forth. And in this battle, some of the things that are happening right now is there, we are entering a transition, a big transition. The world will never be the same. It will never be the same. We will never have peace until Jesus comes. There will be peace within. Amen? Amen? America will decline tremendously. Tremendously. There's going to there's gonna be great sorrows coming shortly. God is rescuing as many people as possible that are willing to be rescued. There are many out there that are still not willing to be rescued because they're still taken captive under deception also. Many of the countries will follow the Antichrist. Even though there's a declining because they will become corrupt. They will become destitute. They will become afraid. And they will believe that the Antichrist regimes and those, whether in deception or truth or reality, are the ones that are going to rescue them. But the United States will not follow that regime, no matter what we go through. Does everybody understand that? No matter what's coming, no matter what's getting ready to happen, the United States will not follow the Antichrist regime. The Antichrist regime in the United States will be dismantled. And God will put his servant and servants in position. Remember, there's something about America America chose God. God chose Israel. Hello. This place was founded for a place to seek God Almighty. That was the purpose of America. And the Lord is fulfilling his promises. But remember, he's bringing judgment to all nations right now. And in that judgment, he's exposing the wickedness. He's exposing the compromisers. He's exposing those who will serve him and those who refuse to serve him. He's exposing the children of the devil and the children of God. He's exposing the left and the right. Everything is being exposed right now. We will reach a level of decline. If you recall in 2008, when the uh, economy collapsed, basically, amen, and many people prior to that, in that period of time, all of a sudden homes and values went up like crazy, just like they're doing now. People went out and got loans and interest rates and so forth. And then the house value declined. So when try, people tried to, I mean, you know, People got second mortgages to get extra money because their houses were up. Now their, their houses declined. Many people began to lose their homes. Now, remember this, that the government did not bail out the people. The government bailed out the banks. I mean, it's stinking crazy. So the banks, you know, one of the things I kept sharing with my wife and friends, I said, heck, just why don't they call me? I'll tell them exactly what to do. I mean, it's a real simple thing. Extend everybody's mortgages. That's all they needed to do. No. They wanted to collapse the economy. They wanted the people that were getting ahead to come down. It didn't succeed all the way. They wanted to really destroy us. So the banks got bailed out. The people did not. The people lost their homes. The banks 
got paid for the losses of those loans. Think about this. Plus, they got the property back. Then they resold the homes again. That's exactly what happened. And the collapse continued. Then things began to be reestablished. And then we got a president that was more concerned about the people than he was about power and money. And he began to change things over. The oil, the Keystone oil began to produce over 800, what, 800,000 gallons a day, more than anyone. We're the most exporting oil country in the world. But they didn't like that. See, the Antichrist regime didn't like that. So they had to cheat to get into office. And they cheated to get in office and they got away with it. Well, they think they got away with it. But the course had to run so that more people could be awakened. Because there was not enough people awakened. First of all, we started off outnumbered. Because this has been going on for centuries. So we needed to have more people to be awakened to stand up and fight. Then they came up with a epidemic. A stronger flu than normal. And they called it a plague. Then they got people and they imparted them with another plague to change their DNA. I saw a prophecy today from 2014, a woman who had basically been in places and taken places. And she was talking about a prophecy in 2000, I think it was 16 or 14, I don't remember, 16. And she said that she sees that a, there, a, a, a plague is going to hit the whole world. And it's going to change everything in the whole world. And they're going to release this plague. Now she's prophesying this. And she said, with this plague, they're going to create a that's going to impart a mark in people. That's going to begin to alter their DNA. They will become more dumbed down. They won't be so supposedly violent, but you know, hallelujah. And what's going to affect the individuals that have been is the 5G. That's why Trump did not allow it. Because it's going to affect people and their attitudes in our way of thinking. Remember, we are in a battle right now, big time. And the Lord said to me, during this period of time, one of the things that we must be very, very careful of is pride. Pride is a killer. See, you can fight off bugs, diseases, plagues, but you've got to fight off pride. And he's expressing to me about the trinity of pride. So go to Galatians chapter 6 in verse 7. Let's speak. Do not be what? Deceived. Deceived. What's Satan's greatest weapon? Deception. And his power is fear. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked for whatever man sows, he's going to also reap. So nobody's going to get away with it. Amen. For he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. But he who sows to the Spirit of God will of the Spirit reap what? Everlasting. So deception is to entrap humanity into a lustful desires of pride, arrogance, and haughtiness. Rebellion and fear. Causing individuals to sow or participate in the selfish desires of the flesh. Committing sins and transgressions. Reaping curses upon themselves and in their family lines. Opening the door to demonic influence, torment, and possession. Does everybody get that? I know there's a lot just said there. Sowing to the flesh, people do not realize the danger of that. The danger of sowing to the flesh. Every time you sow to the flesh, you bring a curse. 
And a curse gives a right way of a demon to enter you. Hello? You can get tormented. You can be possessed or demonically influenced. He said, let none of us grow weary while doing good. For in due season we will reap if we do not what? If we don't lose heart. In other words, in this, those who follow Christ will reap life. Those who do not follow Christ will reap corruption and death. That's the bottom line. Because this is Christ and Antichrist we're battling right now. Amen? 1 John chapter 2, verse 15. Do not what? Love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. There you are. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life or the lust of self is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away, and the lust of it, but he who does the will of God will abide forever. These are three characters, or gates, characteristics, or categories, you might say, or gates that influence humanity. The only way to overcome is to surrender, submit, obey, and follow the Spirit of the living God called the Holy Spirit. Not following is rebellion and is a curse. That's why the Lord says, many say they know me, but they don't know me. See, the word follow is, the word believe means to follow. So if you're saying that you're a Christian and you're not following the guidelines of the Word of God and being led by the Spirit of God, He calls you a liar. And you will, have not, you will not have access into His kingdom. Luke 9. See, what the enemy wants you to do is to not only sow in the flesh, but fall in a place of survival instead of surrender. When a person falls in a place of survival, it's me, myself, and I. Now, me, myself, and I is the trinity of pride. Does everybody get it? That is the trinity of pride. It's all about me. Amen. Luke 9, 23. The, Jesus said to them all, if anyone desires to follow me or come after me, let him do what? Deny himself or his old man. Take up a cross or fight daily. And then you can follow me because you can't follow without a fight. Amen? For whoever desires to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. For what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and he himself is destroyed or what? Or lost. For whoever is ashamed of me and my words, of him the Son of Man will be ashamed when he comes in his own glory and his Father's and of the holy angels. I tell you truly, there are many standing here who shall not taste death till they see the kingdom of God. The trinity of pride, again, is me, myself, and I. The trinity of humbleness or humility is the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. See, remember... Uh, the protector of self-flesh is pride. Pride protects the old man. Fear protects pride. Anger protects fear. And lying protects them. These are all demonic forces and spirits that protect each other. So that self, which is the child of the Antichrist or the devil, can survive can lead. That's why you were always called a little devil when you were a kid. Amen? Because you weren't born again yet. <laughs> we were born in the image of not God. A triune, yeah. Certainly not his character. I was never told I was a godly little kid. I was a little heathen devil. That's what I was called. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, the protector of the new creation in Christ, when you are born again of the Spirit, 
is the anointing. Has everybody got it? That is God's presence, power, and truth. That is the protector of the new creation. Again, the protector of the old man, the old creation, is pride. Anger, fear, lying. So without the anointing of God, it's very difficult to be protected. That's why Jesus commanded them in the upper room. He said, look, here, before you leave, hang here. I don't care if you order pizza, I'll pay for it. Wait for the promise of the Father and get baptized in the Holy Spirit, I command you to. That was not a question or a choice. He commanded. He said, then you can be my witnesses because without the anointing, you can't be my witness. And you're not going to overcome your old man. And you won't be able to carry the truth with you. You'll be disqualified in everything you do. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. Would you turn to Matthew 7? What's the trinity of pride? Me, myself, and I. Don't point at your neighbor. It's all about the old man. It's a survivalist. Fights for itself. Yes. Verse 13. 713, please. It says, enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to what? So easy way to, is destruction, isn't it? And there are many who go in by it. Because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way. Which leads to what? Life. God said, he never said it was going to be easy. <laughs> Amen. He said, you're going to have to fight. That's why you must work out your salvation. And there are few who what? Find it. Wow. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. What is their fruits? Their desires. Do men gather grapes from the thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by their fruits, you will what? Know them. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. But he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? Cast out demons in your name. Done many wonders in your name. And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Wow. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him a wise man who had built his house on the rock. In other words, he's talking about building the foundation. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock, which is the anointing. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who has built his house on sand. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house. And it fell, and great was its fall. It is a narrow gate. Again, these fruits are the heart of desires. Your heart is the core of all desire. You will know them by your, you'll know people by their desires. Now, their desires are their choices. Does everybody get it? Their decisions. You're going to know them by how they choose things. Not only are you going to know them how they choose their words, you're going to know how they choose their purchases, how they choose the choi uh, things and situations, how they, whether they react or they respond, whether they're fighters or they're runners. You're going to know exactly where they are. Is everybody okay? It's a narrow path. It's a narrow gate, difficult because influence of evil that promote flesh. These individuals are not able to deny themselves. And you can't deny yourself. They need the anointing and the power to break through with the sword of the Spirit, which is God's word, to build a foundation so that it will stand and not fall. Amen. Ephesians 6. In verse 10. 
Let's speak it, please. Ephesians 6, 10. Finally, my brethren, be what? Strong in the Lord and the power of his might, not your own. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles, which is the trickery of the devil, so you don't fall into the pride trap. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. So in this, this is very vitally important for me and you. He's saying, get dressed with the full armor of God. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand with, to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to what? Stand. Put on the armor, the anointed armor, to build and to stand, to come against every day. You don't miss it. You don't skip it. It's a part of your life every day. It should be a part of your routine every single day. Psalm 53. Psalm 53, verse 1. Let's speak it. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. In other words, if he's saying there's no God, there's no reverence to God. There's no fear of God. Amen? They are corrupt and have done abominable iniquity. There is none who does good. God looks down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there are any who understand and who what? Who seek God. Every one of them has turned aside. They have all, they've together become corrupt. There is none who does good. No, not one. He says a fool has no fear or reverence to God. Even though they say they believe. But without following, there is no escape from bondage. This is pride and rebellion. And that life is cursed. Remember, you're either blessed or you're cursed. One or the other. Now, you may be blessed in some areas and cursed in others. Amen? Psalm 51. That's why some people will never be free. Because some of the choices and decisions have always brought a curse on. Just a recycle. Sowing in the flesh. Not willing to work it out. Those are roller coaster people. They're up and down. They live by emotion, not by truth. They get offended easily. And then they blame God on it. <laughs> oh, God, you didn't do this. I'm not going to worship you today. <laughs> like it's going to affect God. The only one that affects is you. <laughs> verse 1. So, uh, verse 5, I'm sorry. Psalm 51, verse 5. Behold, I was what? Brought forth in iniquity, and in sin my mother conceived me. Behold, you desire truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part you will make me to know wisdom. In other words, I was born in sin. I was born in darkness. That's how I was born. Every one of us was born in darkness. We were born with veils and blinders on us. He said, purge me with hyssop. And I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me hear the joy and gladness that the bones you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all of my what? Iniquities and created me a what? A clean heart. Oh, yes. A pure heart. Oh, God, and renew a what? Steadfast spirit in me. Now, what does he say? Now, look at this. Do not cast me away from your presence, which is his anointing. And do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Do you understand that? Because he knew without the anointing of God, he could not make it. Amen? So you and I were born in darkness, acknowledging he was acknowledging the sin, transgressions, and iniquities and curses brought on his family line. In humility, he was calling out to God for a clean heart and a steadfast spirit to follow the Lord by the power of the anointing of the Holy Spirit. In Proverbs 11. Why do people get in arguments? To prove themselves. <laughs> 
and they sow in the flesh. Glory. Proverbs 11. In verse 2, I believe it is. Proverbs 11, verse 2. Hallelujah. Everybody there? When pride comes in, comes what? Shame, shame, shame. But with humility is what? Wisdom. Now, what does wisdom do? Tells you what to do. Amen. The integrity of the upright will guide them, but the perversity of the unfaithful will what? Destroy them. Riches do not profit in the day of wrath, but righteousness delivers from what? Death. <laughs> The righteousness of the blameless will direct his way aright, but the wicked will fall by his own wickedness, and the uprightness of the upright will deliver them, but the unfaithful will be cast by their what? Caught by their lust. The unfaithful will be caught by their lust. Pride comes shame. Humble comes wisdom. Proverbs 13. Verse 9. The light of the righteous rejoices. Hallelujah. But the lamp of the wicked will be put out. The pride, by pride comes nothing but strife. But with the well-advised wisdom, wealth gained by dishonesty will diminish. But he who gathers by labor will what? Will increase. Pride comes, strife comes. Wealth gained without working will diminish. But he who works will increase. Beggars will always be beggars until there's a heart change. Amen? Because everything is associated with a heart problem. Pride is a heart problem. You know, when people are out there begging, I mean, they're begging. They may try to sell you a rose, but they're still begging. Hello? Why? Because what are they lacking? God's presence. I've, I've run into many people out there begging. And they've come up to my window and I said, are you a believer? Yes. I said, what are you doing out here then? You're not following God. You say you're a believer, but you're not following the Lord. Because if you're following the Lord, you ain't out here begging. Bottom line. If you need food, I'll come out. I'll buy you a sandwich. But get your butt into a place. And learn so you don't get burned anymore. Hello? Hey, I was homeless. Praise God. But it wasn't until I finally was led by the Lord and followed him. Then I became prosperous. Proverbs 16. Start at 17. The highway, the upright is to what? Depart from evil. He who keeps his way preserves his soul. Pride goes before Destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. But better to be of a humble spirit with the lowly than divide the spoil with the proud. He who heeds the word wisely will find good. But whoever trusts in the Lord, happy is he. Praise God. Pride goes before destruction. Proverbs 21. Verse 23. Whoever guards his mouth and tongue keeps his soul from trouble. Yes. A proud and haughty man, scoffer is his name. He acts with arrogant pride. That's boastful. The desire of the lazy man kills him. <laughs> For his hands refuse to what? Labor. He covets greedily all day long. But the righteous gives and does not spare. Hallelujah. Arrogant pride, self-promoting, boastful, rejects correction and counsel. I don't need any help. Proverbs 29, 23. A man's pride will bring him what? Low, that means disrespectful. Disrespect. 
But the humble in spirit will retain what? Honor. That's respectful. Somebody get it. Whoever is a partner with a thief hates his own life. <laughs> he swears to tell the truth but reveals nothing. The fear of man brings us near. And, but whoever trusts in the Lord shall be what? Shall be safe. Pride brings low. Humble brings honor. Proverbs 22. Proverbs 22, verse 4. By humility and the fear of the Lord is what? Our riches, honor, and life. Wow. That is prosperity, respect, and healing. Has everybody got it? Prosperity, respect, and healing. Why is there respect? Because God will honor you. He will promote you. Proverbs 15, verse 26. The thoughts of the wicked are an abomination to the Lord, but the words of the pure are what? Pleasant. He who is greedy for gain troubles his own house, but he who hates bribes will live. The heart of the righteous studies how to answer, but the mouth of the wicked pours forth evil. The Lord is far from the wicked, and he hears the prayer of the righteous. The light of the eyes rejoice the heart, and a good report makes the bones healthy. The ear that hears the rebukes of life will abide among the wise. He who disdains instruction despises his own soul. But he who heeds rebuke gets understanding. The fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom. And before honor is what? Humility. humility. In other words, before promotion or respect granted, there is humility. I always like the scripture that says, he who rejects correction is stupid. <laughs> Hallelujah. Proverbs 18, verse 12. Before destruction, the heart of a man is what? Haughty. Haughty. Again, that's heart disease. It's polluted. It's contaminated. And before honor is what? Humility. Humility. 1 Peter chapter 5. What's the trinity of pride? Me, myself, and I. What's the trinity of humility? Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. What's the protector of pride? Fear? Anger? What's the protector of self? Pride. Amen. Amen. And who is our protector? The anointing. That's why you got to get baptized with the Holy Ghost. And stay filled with the Holy Ghost. And don't let anything in. Who told you that? Who told you not to worship the Lord and keep your hands in your pocket? Who told you to be rebellious to praising God? Curse is the man who trusts in man and blesses the man who trusts in the Lord. First Pete chapter 5, verse 5. Likewise, you younger people, submit yourselves to your elders. Yes, all of you be submissive to what? One another. That means respectful. Be clothed with humility. For God resists the proud. Hello. Man, you can beg, cry, do everything. But if you're full of pride, God's going to say no. But God gives grace, that means escape, his plan, to the humble. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you, promote you, and do time. Casting your cares upon him, for he cares for you. Be sober, which is alert. Be vigilant, which is consistent. Because the adversary, the devil, walks about a, like a roaring lion, seeking him, may he devour. If you notice, he says, roaring. That means big mouth. Amen. He's an ant with a megaphone. Resist him steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. So you're not the only one. 
But may the God of all grace who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have been challenged a while, you will become perfect, establish strength, and then settle you. Again, we got to come to a place where we got to stop protecting yourself and start exposing yourself of the old man. Come out of a life of constant survival. What am I going to do? How am I going to do it? How am I going to pay for this? That's survival. Worst first thinking, fear. And step into surrender, humbleness, and removing yourself from the cares of the world. Focus on the truth, the presence, and the power of Christ Jesus. On his promises. So he can bless you and promote you. Amen. Psalm 107. Verse 10. Those who sat in darkness and in the shadow of death, bound in afflictions and irons, because they what? Rebelled against the words of God, his words, his promises. They didn't follow him. And because they rebelled, rebellion brings a what? Curse. So they sit in darkness. They miss opportunities. And despise the counsel of the Most High. Oh, man. So they rebelled against his words and they despised his counsel. There he, he brought down their heart with labor. They fell down and there was none to help. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble. And he did what? He saved them out of their distress. God turned it around. He brought them out of the darkness and out of the shadow of death. He broke their chains in pieces so that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness. For his wonderful works to the children of men. For he has broken the gates of bronze and cut the bars of iron in two. He can turn anything around if you're willing to follow him. Fools because of their transgression and because of their iniquities were afflicted. Their soul abhorred all manner of food, and they drew near to the gates of death. In other words, they, drew, they abhorred all kinds of deceptive doctrines. They drew, they drew near to the gates of death. They cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them out of their distresses again. Then he sent his word, and he did what? Healed them. He healed them, and he delivered them from their destructions. All oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness, for his wonderful works to the children of men. Again, let them sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving. And how do you do that? By praise and worship. And declare his works with rejoicing. God turned it around again. And I'm going to close at Colossians 3. But don't let that pride get in. When pride comes in, you become a target. Colossians 3, verse 1. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things that which are above, where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind, set your thoughts on the things above. Not on the things of the earth, like worry, fear, anxiety, stress. <laughs> Me, myself, and I. For you died... And your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you will also appear with him in glory. Therefore, put to death your members which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience. Now, wait a minute. All of this put to death your members. Why? All of this is associated with a corrupt heart, desires. Pride. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience, in which you yourselves once walked when you lived in them. But now you yourselves are to put off these things. But some people are not putting them off. Anger, wrath, malice, fl blasphemy, filthy language out of their mouth. Do not lie to one another since you have put off the old man with his deeds and put out a new man who is renewed in the knowledge according to the image of him who created him, where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised nor uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave nor free, but Christ is 
all and in all. Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on what? Tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. Even if anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, you also must do. But above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also you were called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of God, Christ, dwell in you richly, in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another, in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Again, we are in a time, it's a reality time. It's a wake-up time. Things are going to begin to diminish more and more. But in this, there's got to be a transition. Remember, the word says something powerful. Unless a seed die, it can't live. Amen? It can't grow. So things must come to an end to start a new beginning. As for me and you, we must come to an end every single day. So there can be a new beginning. Everything must come to an end for a new beginning. That's why we must cut ourselves loose from all of the emotional attachments. That's why we must deliver, be delivered, and maintain a place of deliverance and freedom. It's our responsibility. God has given us the power through the anointing of Christ Jesus. He's given us the keys to the kingdom. He's given us keys to bind and loose. But people don't even know them. They're not using them. We must stay in position and stay connected. Amen? It's important. Be careful because the enemy is looking to destroy you. But he is in us is greater than he is in the world. Amen? And we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us if we're in position. Position in is everything. Stay humble. Like I said before, make some keto humble pie. Praise God. And be blessed and prosperous in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen.